Hey everybody, this is Andrew Cartwright. I wanted to go over this new bill, the $2,000 per month stimulus package breakdown, because guess what? Now we can talk about it, because the interim bill is pretty much down the road and we should have a signature pretty soon. Also, um, while, after I get done talking about this new bill, I want to break down the old bill and then give you an idea how it looks over like the landscape of the world in regards to debt, right? So first off, this new, this new bill, the new Emergency Money for the People Act proposed, the proposal is everyone 16 and older, that's 16 and older, even if you're going to school, hanging out, whatever, I would say pool parties, but there's no pool parties or anything like that, or under 18 dances, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. But basically 16 years and older, making less than 130,000 per year gets 2,000 per month for six to 12 months. Now that's 16 years and older, making less than 130,000 per year, they're gonna get $2,000 a month for six to 12 months. Hmm. I don't know that many uh, 16 year olds making $130,000, but I'm sure there's a few, right, that fit that bill. So let's look at the, let's look at the old one real quick. The original stimulus bill for this part of the bill of the uh, 2.2 trillion, which is really about 6.2 trillion when you do the math, um, is 300 billion, right? So the CARES Act was 2.2 trillion, but this particular portion of it was 300 billion. Now the current U.S. debt, if you go to the debt clock, U.S. debt clock, it'll show you global debts, it'll show you all that, just Google it, it's, it's amazing to look at is $24 trillion, which is more than our actual gross domestic product. That's what we produce. Basically, though, our biggest product actually is our own consumption. So, which is, that's tough right now, right? But to give you an idea of what the global idea, just in derivative contracts, remember those? Warren Buffett said they were um, like time bombs or like, um, what do you say? Um, massive destruction, basically like a nuclear bomb for the finance industry, those still sit there and there's $1.2 quadrillion of that. $1.2 quadrillion. And if you go to the Visual Capitalist, which is one of my favorite sites, I go there, I look at you know where silver's at, where gold's at, where the monetary policy is, so I can get a, a real good picture of how everything breaks down. Now, when we look at the global debt, now this is global debt, we're looking at $215 trillion. Now we're like a huge economy. There are lots of, part of parts of the world that don't have the kind of economy we do and don't have the debt structure. In fact, they can't even borrow money. They don't have access to being able to borrow money. That's why in you know, villages in Africa, they have micro lending programs where they lend people so that they can buy a sewing machine to be able to produce a product. So they're not economically as evolved, although Lots of India and Africa, I think, really is the next country that will really, really take off as far as production. Now, let's take this into perspective, right? 300 billion was basically the proposal, and it wasn't, a, it was just the check, right? For people that made 100,000 and less, and they even tiered it. But basically, that, that cost was 300 billion dollars. Now this one, and politicians are saying, this next one, the next CARES Act is going to be bigger than ever, the, like the biggest, right? So, and they're absolutely right. If you do the math on this, it's $700 billion multiplied by six months. That's 4.2 trillion if it went 12 months. And the reason why it gets down there is instead of at 100,000 cap, we're going to 130,000 cap. And we're also digging into where those, you know, dependents were for 500 bucks. Those dependents that would, they would now be $2,000 a month earners from 16 and older. That category that kind of got stuck, right, between um, 16 to, or 17 to 24. So now that, that, get, that gap gets closed. The gap from 130 to 100 gets closed. And now we are basically, we're, 8.4 trillion if this goes 12 months out when you think about it, right? But the bill is 4.2 trillion of stimulus funds 
is and it's just a piece of the CARES Act too. Um, probably will have $2,000 per month stimulus by the month is what they're saying. So this will probably be $2,000 per month in addition to all the other stuff. Now you got to be thinking, well, what about hyperinflation? What about all this stuff? The reality is, is, you know, money's just an idea, right? Since 1971, August 15th, we came off of anything that resembled anything of real value. So our idea of this value of money is really what matters. And since everybody in the world, I know people are being extremely pessimistic and thinking hyperflation is going to hit and all that kind of stuff. But the reality, I've studied money since I was 15, 16 years old. As an entrepreneur, you got to know how money works. If you don't, you're get, you'll get stuck in a short-term debt cycle or get stuck trying, I mean, at the end of oversupply and you're stuck with hyper supply, hyper oversupply and you end up dropping into a recession, that's not good for an entrepreneur or for a business. So with this, people aren't working. So they aren't able to do like, you know, Adam Smith with the, you know, basically cost labor approach of value where what it costs to produce something is equal to the value. There's not that, right? In fact, we'll have surpluses of oil. We'll have surpluses of lots of products because the consumption is gone. But the reality is, is when you make a mortgage payment, let's say you're 40%, you know, of your income goes to your mortgage, anywhere from 90 to 70% of that mortgage payment just goes to interest that evaporates. And when you go to pay back the bank, basically that loan is evaporating because they're able to take 10% of that and create a dollar. So from a dollar, they can create $10. So when you pay back that actual principal, money actually disappears from the supply of capital. So right now, all we are is keeping this coasting, right? As far as an economy goes. And I know that sounds strange, but because we're testing, you know, what about what, what is socialism and what, what is capitalism and how, how do these two fit? The reality is, is that right now we don't have a choice. And I'm sure the economists are sitting there looking at this going, hey, this is an interesting experiment on uh, economics and society, one that is unprecedented. I know everybody's using that word unprecedented, but I mean, in this case, kind of does. It is unprecedented. Go down below and get your Robinhood stock for free. You can fund it for as little as a dollar. You can also open up a Webull account and get stock there as well as much as $1,200 for a stock. They're free. You actually literally get a stock for opening up the account so you can watch what's happening in the stock market. So in addition to that, there's two other proposals and maybe there'll be a lot more. I'm sure everybody's racing to try and come up with the most perfect proposal. One of them is the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act which is um, canceling rent and mortgage payments for a year. Boy, what a complicated bill. Going through that as far as what do you pay in principal? What do you figure you pay people in actual interest? Is it fair to pay principal? How do you deal with all the different contracts and lease contracts, second homes, third homes? Um, how do you break it? It's, it becomes a real mess. In addition to servicers, a lot of times if you see your bill says Wells Fargo on it, there's a good chance Wells Fargo has no skin in the game with your loan. In fact, an investor has invested, like yourself, maybe you've invested in mortgage-backed securities, you own a piece of that agreement, Wells Fargo just services the loan. And a lot of times those servicers still have to make the payments if you don't. So um, we have, there's a whole complicated supply chain about how mortgages are packaged, how they go to market, the investors. Do we pay the investors the money that they've invested into this and their return on that investment? It's, I mean, that's a, that is a tough one. I think it's better, I actually think it's better just to give people straight money. Um, you know, th this just, it makes it, that's a mess. Um, and there's another one called Get America Back to Work Act which is basically a payroll tax rebate covering 80% of the payroll expenses, um, allows business to easily hire and retain employees, which I, I think is great, except, here's the except, most businesses that I know of, that I sell, that I package for the SBA, 
have about two to three weeks of actual cash on hand. So how do they wait for this rebate to come back? How do they wait for that rebate to come back and be able to, are we gonna advance a credit line on top of the rebate? Because they're not gonna have the cash to actually pay the employees when most of those small businesses, those entrepreneurs, those mom and pop shops are literally hand to mouth themselves for whatever income they make, the house payment they have, and then the employees. At the end of the month, most self-employed entrepreneurs, their paycheck register is how they determine their profit. If there's money in the account, they made money. If there's not money in the account, then they didn't make money. You'd be shocked how many businesses I package and sell. They're actually, the value of the business is more than they think because they've spent all the money thinking they don't make money because of how they file taxes, which is, you know, it just is what it is. The bottom line is people usually spend everything they make. So that one, the Get America Back to Work Act, payroll, rebate, that sounds great in theory, but how do you cash flow until then? That one I don't understand. And the Rent Mortgage Cancellation Act, again, it's so complex. I think it could create five to 10 years worth a decade of problems um, just getting relief for a year. I honestly think the best way is just, just pay people until things get back to normal. And I, I, I don't see because of the fact, I don't see a hyperflation risk really because it's not like we're making it easy for people to get money. We're just keeping people not from going off the going off the deep end. So at any rate, so there, I'm sure there'll be more acts to come. All the politicians are saying that the 4.0 is what they're calling it, is going to be the big one. It's gonna be the big one. I anticipate that we'll probably have a lot more bills, just like we're, this bill that's about to be completely signed and solidified with the PPP and the uh, EIDL, and then this second CARES Act 2 that's gonna be coming out. Maybe there'll be a CARES Act 3 and a CARES Act 4, especially since who knows when we're gonna open up again. Now people are pushing it into June. So in fact, in my state, Nevada, the governor says we're at zero uh, as far as phases, and we have to meet a criteria before we can even enter phase one. And then of course, uh, Oscar, I mean, uh, Mayor Goodman, she says just open up, just start, you know, let's just get back to normal. So I'm sure you can see that on CNN. I, this, this, all this is just craziness, right? At any rate, I'm Andrew Cartwright. Um, take care.